This video is brought to you by Raycon. Raycon make great earbuds with a great sound at an affordable price point. They're all about innovative earbud designs at prices that don't break the bank. So they sent me this pair of Everyday E25 earbuds, and I've been using them for a couple of days now. They easily fit in my ear. My ears are kind of weird shapes, so that's nice. They deliver six hours of playtime. The Bluetooth pairing just works, which is nice because normally Bluetooth pairing can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Plus, they come in this case, and what this does is it charges the earbuds. So as well as that six hours of playtime, you pop them in there, it charges them four more times. Now, I've used cheap earbuds, I've used expensive earbuds, but what Raycon do is they deliver a premium experience at about half the price of other premium wireless earbuds. So just go to buyraycon.com forward slash visual politic and you'll get 15% off your order. And let's get into today's video. For years, made in China was synonymous with cheap and cheerful. For example, Chinese mobiles are cheaper than iPhones or Samsung models. However, few Chinese companies have pioneered any new technology until now. Huawei is still the leader on 5G commercial contracts. We're talking about 5G, that is very high speed mobile internet. To give you an idea of just how quick it is, 5G is 20 times faster than 4G. And that doesn't just help visual politic videos load faster on your mobile phone. For example, 5G is going to be critical for us to be able to get used to fully self-driving cars. And I know what you're gonna be thinking. Huawei? But don't they just make mobile phones? Well, yes, but they also manufacture the antennas and all the necessary hardware to assemble internet networks. That is, every time you use the internet from your phone, you're connecting to the nearest antenna. Typically, these antennas are paid for by mobile phone operators, i.e. companies such as O2, Vodafone, or AT&T. But these companies don't make antennas. Antenna manufacturers can be brands like Nokia, Alcatel, or, of course, Huawei. Well, in this new race for 5G, Huawei is the leading company. And you might be thinking, well, that's great, Simon. Congratulations to Huawei. Who cares? Well, that depends on who you ask. For example, this is what Donald Trump thinks. Huawei is something that's very dangerous. You look at what they've done from a security standpoint, from a military standpoint, it's very dangerous. Think about it. Huawei is a Chinese company. As you know, in China, the line between government and business is very blurred. And we're talking about installing internet networks for an entire city or a whole country. That is, Trump is afraid that China might spy on Americans using their their phones. So is Trump right or not? Well, again, it depends on who you ask. Because across the Atlantic, the UK really does want Huawei. And that's not all. Boris Johnson even sent this message to Trump. If people oppose one brand or another, then they have to s tell us which is the what's the alternative. Right? So the question is, how is it that a Chinese company is leading the 5G race? Is this a problem or not? And more importantly, is China really going to spy on us? Well, today we're going to answer those questions, but before we do, let's take a look back at the history. Profitable technology. In 2009, Oslo and Stockholm were the first two cities to deploy 4G networks. A few years later, almost everyone has a 4G connection. The speed and quality of that connection is what has allowed video calls, the success of social networks, the explosion of YouTube, and e-commerce. And the question is, what's 5G gonna bring us? Well, 5G is a telecommunications standard. It is defined by the International Telecommunication Union, which is a UN body. For 5G technology, they established several requirements. It must offer download speeds of at least 20 gigabits per second, response times of less than one millisecond, and technology capable of connecting at least one million devices in one square kilometer. So what does all this mean? Well, mainly, within that million devices, we won't just have mobile phones, we're also talking about self-driving cars, factories, and even houses. It's the future, and if anyone can tell us about it, it's Ren Zhengfei, Huawei's boss. In the next 20 or 30 years, we will see a great technological revolution, where we will become an information society, automated by artificial intelligence. In the era of cloud and AI, we will see explosive growth in data data, bursting forth like a tsunami. This data needs the support of the most advanced equipment possible. 
In other words, no one disputes that 5G is very good. But the question is, is it really worth it? Or put it another way, how much is it going to cost? Well, let me give an example. Spain. At the moment, Spain has 90,000 3G and 4G antennas. Each antenna costs about $87,500. You can get the calculator out right now. If you think that those antennas sound expensive, well, bear in mind that 5G is going to be even more so. You see, mobile networks use high-frequency waves known as millimeter waves. 5G requires these waves to have the best frequency possible to transmit a higher volume of data. The problem is that these waves have more difficulty crossing obstacles, which makes more antennas necessary. And I know what you're thinking. What difference does it really make? It's a safe investment. We all want faster internet. I'm sure the operators are going to line up for 5G. And my response to that would be, are you sure? Because it doesn't seem that clear at all. The truth is, most traders barely make money with 4G. In fact, it is only now, 10 years later, when they're starting to recoup their investments. Think about it. 5G will allow you to download a movie in seconds. The question is, do you really need to download a movie in seconds? I mean, with 4G, you can already see it in a few minutes, and is it really that much of a difference? The same goes for self-driving cars. Yes, they are fantastic. They are going to be a revolution, but have you seen any yet? So far, we're really just talking about experiments. In other words, most things that really require 5G don't yet exist. Yeah, the technology is wonderful, but sometimes getting too far ahead of yourself can be very expensive. Take the example of the Tokyo Olympics. Yes, I know, because of coronavirus, they're not going to be held until 2021, but if they had been held in 2020, it would have been the first major event broadcast in 8K. And yes, maybe you didn't know it, but 8K technology is a thing, and it's anything but cheap. However, I'm sure you're probably watching it on your TV at home in HD, because most people haven't even moved on to 4K. That means that Japan is going to spend a fortune on something that almost no one will notice. So, well, I suppose let's hear it for Japan. All this explains why European countries like Nokia or Alcatel have hardly invested in 5G. They have basically said, ah oh, yeah, 5G is the future, but we'll look into it tomorrow because we're doing something else right now. But in China, they have done the opposite. Why? Well, let's take a look at that right now. Article 7 in rare cases, China has been as transparent as it has in deciding that developing 5G is a priority. And you know how Beijing works with its five-year plans. They have a centralized economy, and they have said, let's go for it. So the communist regime has moved everything quickly so that Huawei, one of its flagship companies in the telecommunications sector, is investing in 5G. Have they done it? Well, as they said in Jurassic Park, we haven't spared any expense. State support helped fuel Huawei's global rise. China's tech champion got as much as $75 billion in tax breaks, financing, and cheap resources as it became the world's top telecom vendor. Today, Huawei is known by all of us, but you should know that this is a private company that began in 1987. So it has been able to benefit from a double boom, the telecommunications boom and the boom in China's economy. Huawei managed to take hold of the huge Chinese market and deliver them fully fledged communications from virtually nothing. It is currently second in the world for selling the most mobile phones, more than 200 million a year. However, selling smartphones is only half of its business. The other half is the development of mobile networks, and they're not doing so badly. Huawei is the undisputed market leader in 5G. It has reached a 30% global market share, and now you'll be thinking, well, where is the problem with a Chinese company leading the world market? It is what globalization does, and China is just one more competitor. The problem is, when we take a look at Chinese law, we find things like this. <laughs> Any organization or citizen shall support, assist, and cooperate with the state intelligence work in accordance with the law. Article 7 of the National Intelligence Law, 2017. Well, yes, even if Huawei denies it, it is clear that the Chinese government can force you to spy. Obviously, there are fears that this could happen in the West, but there's something even more dangerous. In a hypothetical serious conflict between China and any other country using Huawei's mobile network equipment, the biggest risk is no longer that Huawei will spy on you. Think about it. In a world world with cars connected to the internet, factories connected to the internet, even hospitals connected to the internet, what if China controlled all of that in a war? 
And yes, I know what you're thinking. Well, Simon, this sounds like a mixture of sci-fi and a ridiculous conspiracy theory. And well, yeah, it may seem unthinkable, but there have already been a number of governments that are taking it very seriously. And we're not just talking about Donald Trump. And latest country to exclude Huawei ZTE from 5G rollout over security concerns. However, in Europe, they're not so clear. Why? Well, look at this. Boris Johnson's move. In Europe, there are powerful companies to develop mobile networks. Ericsson is Swedish, Nokia is Finnish. What's more, many of these companies also have their own 5G systems. But of course, China is going at another speed. China already has 5G coverage in 50 cities with 150,000 base stations running. By the way, Wuhan is among them, but hold on for a minute because Chinese operators don't stop. This year, they're going to be investing 25 billion euros to raise 5G coverage to 330 cities thanks to more than 500,000 base stations. So saying no to Huawei technology comes at a price. It could mean that 5G arrives two years late. And okay, yes, China does have laws that could force Huawei to spy, but there are two things we cannot forget. The first is that Huawei has been operating in Europe for two decades. That's right, many of the antennas that connect your mobile to the world are made by Huawei, and at the moment, there's no proof that they're spying. And what's the second thing we can't forget? Well, take a look at this map. This is the map of countries with backdoor laws. That is, in all the countries that you see red, the government can force a service operator to let you see messages. These laws were made to be able to investigate terrorists. The United States has laws of this kind, France and the United Kingdom as well. And to know what you're going to tell me, well, let's see, Simon, being spied on by a communist dictatorship is not the same as being spied on by a democracy. And of course, you're absolutely right, but at this point, to what extent are we talking about security or economic xenophobia? I mean, what's the real problem? That China may spy on us, or having a Chinese company compete at the top of the field? And it's not just about ethics, we're talking about money. At the moment, Huawei has the most modern and cheapest 5G. How much cheaper? Well, on average, it's 20% less than European alternatives. So the UK has sought a formula to have the cutting-edge cell network technology that Huawei offers, while saving a lot of pounds and not provoking the anger of Donald Trump. Yes, the latter will be the most complicated because the UK belongs to the Five Eyes Alliance. Five Eyes is a pact that includes the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand. This alliance monitors the security of electronic communications. Of these five countries, the United Kingdom is the only one who works with Huawei. And you'll say, well, what's going on here? Has Boris Johnson gone mad? Has he been bribed? Well, no, none of that. Quite the opposite. The UK has been watching Huawei very closely for 10 years. In fact, in 2010, the Cybersecurity Assessment Center was created very close to Oxford. So what conclusions have they reached? Well, the only thing they've criticized in the past 10 years is that the software could have been better programmed. But come on, that's what happens to any telecommunications company. Oh, and by the way, they found absolutely nothing related to espionage. All this explains why Johnson has turned a deaf ear to pressure from the United States. Because it turns out that Washington is going around threatening to cut off all intelligence collaboration with any countries in which Huawei supplies 5G. But Boris Johnson master of unlikely deals after getting Brexit has found a 5G formula in the UK that ensures that neither China nor the US could be troubled by Downing Street. UK will allow Huawei to supply 5G with tight restrictions. The UK has decided to exclude Huawei computers from the core, the so-called network core. In other words, Huawei will not be used to service 5G government communications, military bases, nuclear power plants, etc. That is, to anything deemed critical to security. However, Huawei equipment can be used on the antennas that make up the network structure which supply homes and businesses. However, they will never be more than 35% of the network for each of the operators. Thanks to this move by Johnson, the UK can have 5G two years in advance, make a positive impact on its economy amounting to £7 billion, and have Trump's anger reduced to an argument over the phone. Meanwhile, the United States is still trying to pull out its own 5G alternative. But well, that's a story for another video. So now the question goes over to you. Do you 
think Boris Johnson is right to let Huawei install its 5G mobile networks in the UK, or are you more of Trump's point of view? Leave your answer, please, in the comments below, and I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos. Also, please do check out our friends at the Reconsider Media podcast. They provided the vocals in this episode that were not mine. And as always, thank you for watching. And if you want to learn more about politics and hear even more of my lovely voice, you can join us at Reconsider Media. We have a podcast at reconsidermedia.com slash podcast. See you there.